Hello all, good morning. Welcome to the Manage Engine webinar. Uh, the topic for today is synchronize your IAM and HRMS for a seamless employee lifecycle management. My name is Megha and I am the product expert here at the AD Solutions team in Manage Engine. So today's session is going to be all about how or why you need to integrate your identity management solution if you're using um, any third party solution or if you're using one of the manage engine solu uh, products uh, why you need to bring in these two applications together to make sure that your tasks as well as the at uh, the hr's tasks are less burdened and we're going to see some of the best practices or, and we compare and contrast the native tools as well as the um, solutions, the third party identity management solution. Uh, to be specific, I'll be talking about one solution within our Manage Engine Suite, which is called as AD Manager Plus. So if you're already using the application or if you're evaluating the tool, uh, or if you're completely unfamiliar with the solution, uh, hopefully by the end of the session, you will get a better understanding of what uh, the tool is all about and how we bring in the HRMS component in the AD Manager Plus solution uh, to sort of um, accelerate your user management uh, processes, right? So that's how the uh, flow of the session is going to be. I've just listed some key uh, takeaways that we're going to be uh, tackling with uh, in today's session. Um, before that, before we even get to this, I want to give a little bit of introduction or, uh, or introduce you or maybe fam re familiarize you with some of the scenarios that you are facing in, in a day to day normal enterprise employee management action. Right? So, in, in when it comes to managing your employees, the HR teams will work in tandem with you, the IT teams on an ad hoc basis, right? To provision accounts for new hires, uh, deprovision accounts when employees leave. And on top of that, uh, there are constant changes to employee profiles based on team or location changes, and they need to be addressed immediately, right? So in this case, you're depending on an external team, which is the HR team, and that can create bottlenecks in employee onboarding and also increase security risks when the access rights of former employees are not revoked in time. So the solution here is you can integrate the HRMS solution, whatever application that you're using in your environment with your Active Directory, Exchange, Microsoft 365 and other platforms. So you can synchronize the data stored in the HRMS employee information fields with their corresponding fields in AD. Now by doing so, you can protect the data integrity avoid data entry errors, tighten security, and save time normally spent on managing the properties of these accounts, right? So this is what uh, we're going to be addressing in today's session. So I've just listed a normal scenario that you would be seeing quite often when it comes to employee onboarding, right? So the HR will be sending you an Excel sheet uh, or a CSV file containing all the new users or the new employees who are set to join the organization on a stipulated date and time, right? And he will be exporting that data from the HR application that he is using, whatever that may be, whether it's Workday or Bamboo HR, or if it's um, RT Pro, any of those solutions that he might be using, he will export that and he will send those details to you via email. And then it's up to you as an IT administrator to provision those accounts in all those platforms, right? Starting from Active Directory, um, and then you move on to the other business applications that you might be using in your environment. If you wanna provision an exchange mailbox, then you go ahead and do that right after you provision account in Active Directory. And then in other applications like Microsoft 365 or OCS or Skype or, or Teams, whichever that you might be using. Now, every time this happens, uh, if it is for a single employee, it's easy, right? You can just quickly do that. It will not take more than uh, a few minutes to get this all sorted. If the onboarding happens for n number of users, right? 10, 15 users at the same time, 
then you are tasked with the same routine activity that you will have to repeat for all these users one by one. Meaning you're going to spend, uh, you know, 10 times uh, the time you would need to spend on provisioning one account. Um, on top of that, you will have to be, be careful that you do not uh, make any errors because you're doing this manually. But if you're using a PowerShell script to get to this, um, again, you have to be uh, very good at scripting. You will have to be, uh, you'll have to troubleshoot the errors if there are any. You should be uh, extremely uh, diligent to make sure that everything is in place before you run a script, right? Or else you could end up with errors. So again, there is a lot of dependence dependency on you to sort of you know sort this uh, before the employees join the organization. And if the HR is going to send this to you quite late, let's say just a day before the employees are starting the organization, then you will have to provision user accounts or in you know all those related accounts in a mat in a day or so, right? So if it's the more the number of users, the difficulty is just going to be, uh, you know, increased along with the number of users because you'll have to repeat that, repeat this activity for all those users. Right. Um, so the first step or the first key point that we're going to discuss is how we're going to tackle this. Employee onboarding is something that every organization faces from time to time, depending on the size of your organization. If you are a large organization and you hire frequently and then you have employees joining in bulk, for example, for campus hires or uh, you know, an, uh, an off, an, a campus off drive, then you will have people joining in, in hordes, right? So you will have to address all of this uh, quickly as possible and as efficiently as possible without any errors. Now, when you do so, you will have to repeat the process for all those employees joining the organization but what you're doing is you're bringing in the HR element here. Now, for example, just imagine a scenario where the HR himself is not sending all those details to you. Instead, what the HR is doing as a first step when he receives the employee information is he will enter all those new user details on the HRMS application that he is using, right? So when he enters all those details, right? Now, what if you integrate your IAM solution with the HRMS solution? When you do so, the IAM solution will detect the new entries in the HRMS application via the integration feature. And those new entries will be fetched in, right? And will be brought to the HRMS, and will be brought to the IAM and, and will be detected as, or, or understood as, uh, this is a set of new users and the accounts need to be provisioned for all these new users, right, in respect to platforms. Now, what exactly is going to happen at the IAM, that is up to you to configure, right? So I'll show you how you can do that with the help of the tool that we have. And once these details are fetched and then sent to the IAM end, then the tool itself will take care of the user provisioning process, right? So there is no need for the HR department to notify you with the set of new, with a list of new employees who are joining. Rather, you sort of let the two tools, uh, you know, mesh together and then communicate with each other and take care of this on their own with minimal intervention on your part as well as the HR, uh, HR employees part. Now. Uh, onboarding is one activity that is taken care of, but it doesn't end with that, right? Employees join the organization, but they also leave the organization, right? Attrition happens. And most of the time, unless the HR is going to communicate to you saying that, hey, these are the set of users who have left the organization, right? So these employees are no longer with us. And here, please go ahead and take care of these accounts, meaning deprovision those accounts or do whatever is necessary so that these employees do not get or access the organization's data once they are out of the company, right? But again, that is if you have a very good HR system who's going to uh, notify you as and when the employees leave the organization, then you're lucky. 
right? But that's always not the case. You wouldn't know who are those employees uh, and you know what is the status of your Active Directory accounts. Are these users in my Active Directory active? Uh, do they still belong to the company? Do they need these access rights? But you really do not have that kind of visibility unless the team is communicating to you, the HR is communicating to you saying that these employees no longer exist within the company's realm. So please go ahead and deprovision those accounts. Now, what happens is over time, there is a buildup of these dormant accounts, stale accounts, inactive accounts. We can call them any of these. Right? So they're just there in your um, domain with all those privileges they had when you know, they were part of the organization, right? So what could this mean um, that, you know, if somebody, if some uh, ex-employee wants to go and wants to access uh, your domain um, resources, right? He will be able to do that because all those accounts are just lying there. The privileges are not removed. He will be part of certain top level security groups that he was when he was part of the organization. And that hasn't been revoked, right? He will have access to data that he no longer needs. He no longer should be um, you know, privy to. And aggravated ex-employees can um, sort of uh, you know, take advantage of the situation, right? So most of the time you're worried about the external threats. What is going to happen when something external or someone external is going to access uh, these compromise, these accounts, right? But we also tend to forget insiders, insiders um, or malicious insiders who know that these accounts are just lying there. They haven't been taken care of or they just want to give a try and see uh, if they are able to access these, uh, access this data or access this account and see what sensitive data that they can siphon off Right, due to some um, reason that they might have, they might go rogue on you and try to get some data that is not necessary and definitely um, unauthorized access. Right, so so the best possible solution here is again waiting for the HR to send those details and then you taking care of that. Yes, that should be how it. Um, you know, that is that is the ideal situation, but is that how it? Uh, it normally happens in your environment. If, if that's the case, then, then that, that's really good. That's great news. But if that's not the case, then again, we will have to uh, you know, consider the alternate route, which is what I've been telling uh, you know, in, when it comes to employee onboarding as well, which is integrating your HRMS with your IAM. Once again, that's going to save your day. Now with, with onboarding, when the HR is entering all those details, the tool itself will fetch those details and create accounts in uh, all those platforms. Now, similarly, this could go, this could work the other way as well. When the employee, when the HR is disabling those accounts or deleting those accounts or setting, um, you know, maybe changing the status of those uh, employee information to maybe inactive or you know uh, exit or whatever that keyword might be right to differentiate an active employee from uh, an employee who has left the organization now based on that change whether it's disabling accounts or base or deleting those accounts once again if this integration is done then the IAM solution will once again detect that right there has been a change in the status of these user accounts or computer accounts, right? But we're gonna be talking about user accounts for this example, right? So looks like these employees have left the organization and they have been disabled. And based, based on the <clears throat> configuration that you have set in the IAM side of the application, the application will detect uh, these di disabled accounts, right? The status has been changed. Now, what do I do? So. Uh, just quoting a few examples that, you know, that could be done from your end, right, before you even configure or before you activate the deprovisioning activity. Uh, first off, removing all these employees 
uh, from the existing OU and then moving them to another OU, right? That could be a great way to differentiate between the active users and the inactive users, right? Employees who have left the organization, terminated users, moving them to a different OU, removing them from all the groups they are a part of, right? Important groups, groups that were relevant to their teams, their uh, departments, your, their designation and so on. Removing their file server permissions, right? Their NTFS and share permissions, purging them off that. Whatever licenses that might be linked to that account, Microsoft uh, 365 licenses don't come cheap. And you want to remove those licenses and assign them to, reassign them to users or active users who would really need those licenses, maybe disabling their mailbox or exporting the contents for their of their mailbox and so on. Just listing a couple of uh, just few uh, deprovisioning actions that could go along with disabling the account, right? Before you disable the account, you want all these actions to be taken care of. And once that's done and that is sorted, right? Then the account can be disabled. And that is up to you to configure, right? But the best part is, the immediate detection of the stale accounts, the disabling of the accounts or the deleting of the accounts, which is done by the HR and the tool detects that change and brings forth all these change that I just listed on the IAM side of the application, right? So onboarding, offboarding, we discussed both, right? So that's not the ultimate change that's going to happen. There are going to be a ton of changes in between, right? As in when the employee joins the organization, he will have a certain set of privileges. He will be a certain, uh, he will be part of certain groups. Um, he will belong, he will have access to certain resources and everything is set, but that's not going to be the case going forward, right? So he is going to be, uh, he is going to move to a different team. He might be promoted. He might be uh, moved to another location. He will need additional privileges uh, depending on the function and his designation and his role, right? As in when his uh, role changes or uh, it as he progresses to work in his company, in his team, then he will need access to more uh, resources. He will need changes, his department attributes, his contact attributes, his manager could be a uh, field could be changed. So, so many changes that could happen on a day to day basis, right? Now, every time a change like of this nature happens, now giving an example of users being promoted, employees being promoted, right? So that's a change that will be reflected the designation change um, and the manager field and the groups they are a part of those key attributes right those will be updated by the HR in the HRMS application that is important that kind of information will be listed um, in the HR um, application by the HR right that's that's that needs to be done immediately now again once again you unless you get a notification from the HR uh, saying that, hey, the designation has been changed from this to this, meaning that these changes have to be done in active directory with respect to this change, right? So all of this is up to you once again to take care of. But if the change is quick, right? If the changes or the alerting is quick, then you can immediately address it. Again, if it's, we are not talking about a single user, we're talking about multiple users, each of them have their own set of changes, their own set of um, uh, you know, uh, attributes to be updated, meaning you're going to have your hands full with all those help desk requests. And on top of that, those reset password, unlock accounts, all those trivial day-to-day -day tasks that comes your way, you will have to take care of that as well, right? Those are very important and they need to be addressed right away, right? So the solution again is with the integration when the HR is changing those details in the HRMS application, once again, the tool will detect the change and make the corresponding change, right? If the department is changed, if the department is you of a user is moved from, for example, he's moved from marketing to sales, then that means a list of attributes have to be updated accordingly. And if that's the case, right? If you have a pre-configured template which is going to address all those uh, changes, 
without you having to manually make those changes one by one, right? So this is going to take care or, you know, at least take one, uh, you know, task off your list without you having to manually intervene. You can have a mechanism or you can involve a mechanism wherein you simply review those changes, right? You all, you need to have a, some level of control over the changes that are happening because then, you know, if something goes wrong and you don't know what went wrong, it's really difficult to keep track of that. But the most of the, um, you know, the toughest of the tasks or the time consuming tasks are dealt by the tool, by the application, thanks to the integration. And you can just quickly take a look at all those changes. And if it looks good, you know, you approve it. And then the changes will be automatically updated in Active Directory, right? So that's another way of simplifying or your uh, or addressing your help desk request that comes your way. So every team, every designation, every role will have its own set of privileges, its own set of access rights. Um, you know, they will be, uh, they will have, there'll be a certain uniformity, right? Leaving all those unique attributes, for example, the name, the email address, the contact, um, uh, I'm sorry, the, um, the e yes, the contact attributes, all of those, those unique attributes aside, users belonging to the same department, for example, the finance department will have a certain set of privileges, right? They will be a part of certain groups. They will have access to certain resources. They will be reporting to a certain manager, right? So all of this will be, um, you know, uniform and with respect to each department, it will have a certain common values. Now, for example, when it comes to employee onboarding or when it comes to modifying employees, right? Unless you have a checklist of permissions or those that data that needs to be, you know, given to you saying that if the, if the user belongs to this department, then these are a set of uh, privileges, then this is what his attribute value should contain. Um, if the user is being promoted from this particular role to this particular role, then this is what needs to be done, right? So for every change that is happening or even with employee onboarding, whatever that is, right? Whatever change that may be, then unless you as an IT administrator or if you are a team of IT administrators, if you are a large organization and you have a number of IT teams taking care of your large employee database and then managing their request day to day, right? So if there is no common checklist for all of you, uh, IT administrator A will be going about it differently. IT administrator B will be, uh, you know, looking at it completely differently. So everyone will have a unique way or a unique approach to it, right? There is no consistency. Now, if that's the case, uh, what are the possibilities of errors creeping very high, right? And each of you, each of you have, uh, you know, a different approach to dealing with it. Again, the errors could be high, the privileges could be misconfigured. And then what happens is you'll have more helpless coming your way, right? right? That it leads to more damage. Now, this inconsistency can be avoided if all of you have a template, right? Uh, by template, I mean a common framework, which all of you can access. And this template will define the roles and privileges and everything, right, connected to that in one particular window, and you can access that and simply invoke those, uh, invoke that framework when you are creating users or when you are modifying users. If that's the case, wouldn't your time be, uh, when your time spent on these tasks be reduced? Wouldn't the errors be completely avoided? And your task is just, and your activity is just going to be really efficient with no need to even review those changes because once you create that framework and you review it once, then that's it. You don't have to re rework on it. You don't have to uh, you know, check if, if, if it's right or wrong because that is the standard that you have and that's the standard the entire organization is going to follow, right? Now, 
This may seem a little ambiguous, the term templates and framework, but when I explain the tool, uh, you will get a better understanding, I assure you. Most importantly, you are doing a set of actions, but who is knowing or who is having visibility into that, right? You are making a change. The change is of um, severe nature. Maybe you are altering users group privileges based on user's request or based on the manager's request, but it's, the onus is on you, right? You have to do it. Now if, but you also need to keep the people informed. How do you do that, right? Again, real-time alerts, be it email or SMS, which is notifying the relevant people involved, whether it's the employee himself, whether it's the manager, if it's an onboarding activity, you want the HR also to be involved. He also should be in the loop. Um, if it's an employee modification, once again, the employee and a simple activity like a reset password, you want to notify the user, that also needs to be informed. And deprovisioning, another activity, right? which is quite important, which needs to be monitored, which needs to be immediately alerted, whoever is, uh, you know, whoever is relevant to that particular change, the HR, the team manager, the IT administrator, uh, the manager in your team, right? So whoever it is, they need to be notified, right? A email, SMS, whatever works for you. And that is one way. And when you are integrating the HRMS solution with your IAM, you have the option of configuring these real-time alerts. Meaning whenever the change happens, right? And you as well as the HR have kind of left the tools to take care of it, right? To communicate between each other and uh, you know, take care of the entire, automate the entire action but you also want to know what is the status of that action. Was it a success? Was it a failure? And that's when these real-time alerts come into play, right? They're going to help you stay, stay on track or you know, get the visibility into all those changes that are happening, which are where you're not directly involved, right? So you have configured uh, all of that in the backend. And when you're letting the tool uh, you know, do its job, but you still want to make sure that you know, it's all done, taken care of, these real-time alerts help. Now, I have spoken at length about some of the possible solutions and some of the ways and how it's going to alleviate your uh, problems with the HRMS, um, you know, with, when it comes to HR and the IAM, um, the IT administrators, how, how bringing these two applications together will solve a host of problems. I have talked at length about it, but I also want to introduce you to the solution which facilitates that, right? The AD Manager Plus within the Manage Engine Suite allows you to integrate with a few HRMS applications. So I'll be listing uh, them in a bit. Now, what does it do, right? When you're integrating, what can you do? Whatever I just mentioned, you can automatically create users, you can modify users, you can delete or deprovision users, right? So all of this can be auto automated with this integration. Now, the best part is I want to show you how you can perform. Uh, when I'm talking about creating users, I'm not talking about just active directory, right? Creating users and active directory. I'm also talking about the business, the uh, account creation in other applications as well. When I log into the tool and show you how you can do that, then you'll be able to see what all tools we support and how the integration is going to be really seamless and going to take off a huge chunk of your time that you would you know normally spend on uh, you know working with these accounts right creating user accounts managing these user accounts and on top of that um, you know deprovisioning these user accounts now the tools that we integrate with are as of now Workday, Altipro, Bamboo HR, Zoho People is our in-house application. So if you're using that, you can integrate that as well. And MS SQL and Oracle databases. Now, if you have any of these solutions in your environment and your HR is using this, well and good, you can go ahead and integrate that. But you do not, they are not using any of this, but they're using some other um, HR tool which has MS SQL or Oracle as its database, 
then you can simply configure those details uh, you know, to facilitate the integration, right? Uh, so I don't want to spend too much time on that. I'll quickly log into the application. Before that, this is what the integration looks like. Just a quick overview of how it looks, a diagrammatic representation. So as you can see, we have the HR technician here. He is entering all those user details in the HR application, right? The S, uh, username, the password, the employee, the email address, all those details that he will uh, need uh, to create an employee um, account. All of that will be entered into the application. Now the integration will allow the data to be fetched, right? So the application that I was talking about is AD Manager Plus. So it will search for any new updates, whichever tool that you might be using, whether it's a user creation, whether it's a user deletion, or whether it's a user modification, whatever change that is uh, you know, done in this particular application will be, it'll be constantly um, searching for that, right? And then using the automated user management module that is in inbuilt, uh, you know, in the application, the accounts will be created in Active Directory and other platforms. Just a simple example, just a simple diagrammatic explanation to show you how this, this works. Right, so now that we have seen it, let me log into the application. Um, again, just a quick introduction of what AD Manager Plus is about. If you haven't heard about AD Manager Plus at all, and this is completely new to you, I will make this very brief, right? So AD Manager Plus is predominantly an active directory management and a reporting solution within the Manage Engine uh, suite of solutions. Again, I don't want to say just active directory because we also support integration, uh, uh, I'm sorry, we also support provisioning and modification and deprovisioning in other business applications as well, whether it's Microsoft 365 or whether it is um, Exchange uh, Mailbox. So you do not have to use um, the Exchange Management Console to take care of the mailbox provisioning. All of this is available in this particular window. Skype for Business, MS Teams, uh, and G Suite as well. So these are the applications we support. So if you have any other application uh, that you know doesn't come under the list that I mentioned, then uh, apart from that, you can basically take care of everything else within this, this window. It's just within the AD Manager Plus console. So it's a web-based solution which is going to help you, uh, you know, address all of this without you know needing or without requiring to toggle between multiple windows. So there are different uh, tabs. The tool is really easy to navigate and use. Uh, different tabs indicate different function here on the top. The management will have all the management actions that are uh, present with respect to not just Active Directory users, but other objects as well, right? If you want to create com computers, if you want to create contacts, OUs and other objects, right? Groups, everything is under the management tab. Similarly, the, the, uh, the tool has more than 200 reports and counting, right? So we have a predefined reports which you can simply click on and access, right? And they can be generated, they can be scheduled to be sent to your inbox at any particular time, right? So all of this can be done. So you have uh, customized, uh, sorry, there are predefined reports as well you can access. And we have custom reports uh, which will allow you to create a report of your requirement, right? So you can create a new custom report and you can access it in this particular window. Now the uh, Microsoft 365 or the O365 has all the management and uh, you know reporting aspects under it. So you can access it um, and perform any management and reporting action that you want without uh, you know accessing the O365 admin center. So the idea is bringing together all these applications, all the capabilities of these applications under uh, in one single window. So you don't have to use different tools. You don't have to use ADUC separately. You don't have to use EMC. You don't have to use ADSI edit. You don't have to use uh, Microsoft 365, so on, right? So all of this are different applications. You will have to toggle between these platforms to take care of a, an activity as, you know, as simple as depro, uh, provisioning or deprovisioning, right? So uh, just uh, wanted to give a quick introduction. Now, the integration that we support Right, I'm going to quickly take you to the integrations 
bit and then I'll show you the applications that we, the HRM is applications that we support, right? So uh, Zoho people, Workday, Altipro, Bamboo HR, uh, Microsoft SQL Server, and Oracle database. You click on any of this, right? You can add a new configuration. You can enter a configuration name, a description, uh, uh, these, these details that are requested from. You can click on test connection and save and your automation, I'm sorry, your integration will be uh, you know, taken care of. Now, where do I configure my automation, which will basically allow the application to communicate with the HR application and then get those details and do the necessary action, right? So what you will be doing is you will be accessing the automation tab right here. And I'm going to show you how you can create a new automation with respect to user provisioning, right? It's just a simple example. And you can replicate the same process for modifying users as well as deleting or disabling users, right? So uh, just a sample automation. So. I'm going to, you can choose a particular name, uh, user creation, set a description. The category is user automation because we're going to be creating users. You can choose an, a domain or an OU here. And at this point, you can choose the task that you want to automate, which is create users. So I've selected that. Now this is where uh, a template comes into picture, right? So I'll show you what a template is. So in this case, I'm just going to select um, you know, just one template from the drop down list, but I'll explain what a template is in a bit. Now, my input, right? I have, I'm going to create, I'm going to create an automation for creating users, but where am I go get, going to get those details from, right? New users, where do I fetch it from? This is where you can get the details from the HRMS applications, right? So if you choose Alti Pro, right? Um, as of now, the setup that I have does not have, it's a demo setup, it does not have a configuration. But if there was a configuration which is already done by you, the, those details will be uh, fetched here, right? So basically the tool will detect the new users that are entered in the RT Pro database or modified. But in this case, since we have created a task for create users only, it'll just detect the new users that are created. Similarly, we can create new automations for modify as well as de delete users. And you can choose when you want this to run. If you want to set a custom time, then you can choose a custom time and a date. Now you know that new employees will be joining the organization at a stipulated date. Uh, and you want this automation to be taken care of maybe um, just a couple of days before the users are joining. Right? You don't want them to be configured too early. You don't want them to be configured too late. Whatever your organization my, uh, policy might be when it comes to onboarding, you want to make sure that you know you choose that date, right? You choose whatever date that is, the time, and you choose a frequency. Since it's um, user um, onboarding, right? And depending again, if you are a large organization and you have frequent onboarding, but again, the time uh, when the onboarding happens, the frequency of it is unknown, then you can choose just to set it once, run it once, and then you can choose your date and time, right? So that can be done. And you can enable the notification. Now the notification template and the uh, email content, the SMS content, the to field, the subject, the attachment, everything can be customized. So you can keep, uh, either edit the existing one, right? Customize the data, add the necessary macros, modify the uh, notification value. All of this can be altered, right? Just a completely customizable data. You can create a new template if you want from scratch, enter all those details and you can save it. So based on each action for create users, if you have a uh, set content that needs to go out in your email and SMS, you can configure that. And that can that will be triggered every time when the create users activity is fulfilled. Similarly, for reset password, you can create your own template for uh, disabled user account. You can create your own notification template and so on, right? You, there, are, there is no limit to the number of templates that you can create you can create any number of templates that you want, both email and SMS. Customize the you know, sender, uh, sender field, the subject, the attachment, and so on. 
So all of that can be done. You can click on save. And then on that particular date and time, what happens is uh, the tool, the AD Manager Plus application will uh, try to fetch the details, will fetch the details from the UltiPro application, right? We'll see the new users being entered. And then uh, based on the template that you've configured here, the accounts will be created in all these platforms, right? Active Directory, Microsoft 365, Exchange Mailbox will be provisioned, uh, Microsoft Teams, uh, licenses, everything will be done in one step, right? Again, if it's if you do not want to go ahead with this and if you just want to import from a CSV file, right, with the list of users in a CSV file and do it the old fashioned way, that is possible too. You can just give the location here and then the new user details will be uh, collected from the CSV file and the accounts will be provisioned. Either way, you're going to be saving a lot of time with this automation because once you configure this and set this to run, then you will not have to, uh, you know, go and take a look at it again, right? So once it's run, and if you want to see the status of that, if you come back to automation, you will be able to see whether it's a success or a failure. So right now, all these automations are not, um, haven't run yet. So they are all, um, you know, configured and set. But if you have, this is just a test setup, just giving you, a rough idea on how it looks, but you will be able to see the status, whether it's a success or a failure. And if it's a failure, what was the issue? And if you want to, uh, you know, quickly tweak it, right? Troubleshoot the issue and then re, uh, reset it to run, that can be done as well, right? So similarly, you can do uh, repeat the same activities process that we saw that I just demonstrated for the other actions as well, right? So if you saw there was a create user, option that was first on the list, but then there are other options as well, like reset password, um, unlock accounts, disable users, delete users, custom script, removing licenses, everything. So all of this, there are some pre-built routines for user, user automation as well as for other uh, objects as well. You can choose the desired object from the list and you can uh, configure your task, right? I just want to quick uh, do a quick introduction to templates before we wind the session. Now, templates is the framework that I was talking about in the fourth point. Now, with template, what you can do is you can basically create, you customize your complete, uh, the layout of the user creation, right? Or even user modification. Basically, what you can do is you can choose what all attributes need to be, what all tabs should be visible based on who is accessing the template or who is accessing this particular application to perform user management actions, right? So uh, if I want to like customize the complete view that I'm that I'm seeing right now, and I want to delegate only few tabs, right? I want uh, maybe if you are, um, you know, giving this user onboarding activity to a new user, right? A new user in your team. And he is just starting off, he's doing his training. So you don't want to do any, give him any uh, tasks of which needs a lot of, um, you know, knowledge with, with respect to domain, with your environment, uh, with the, with your organization. But just to start off with, you want to give him just a few access rights for him to get familiarized himself with the, both the tool and the processes within your organization. Then you can choose to restrict what he will be able to do, right? So what I can do is uh, to start off with, I can maybe uh, remove these tabs that are not necessary for this particular user, right? So uh, let's say I just want to retain my general account and contact tab. And that's what this new IT administrator will be taking care of. Meanwhile, once he fills in all those details and then then you can go ahead and then enter all these details, right? So I'm just going to quickly customize wherein these applications or these tabs are hidden, right? So he doesn't see them at all. So I just delete them and all of them are moved to the field tray that you can see on the left. Now we're just left with, you know, general account and contact app. Right? So all of this is what we need. And again, if you want to um, edit those details, and if you want to uh, 
make certain attributes mandatory, that's possible as well. For example, I'm just going to quickly reload this uh, because we seem to have some delay with the internet. Right. Uh, right, so that just got reverted. But all right, let me quickly uh, explain how this is going to work, right? For example, if I want to, so you saw how you can remove them, right? You just click on the tab that you want and delete the tab, that's it. If you want to bring it back, you can drag it back, that's it. Now, if you want to make certain attributes as mandatory, for example, uh, just another example, if you want to uh, set the certain employee ID field as mandatory, you can edit that and make it as mandatory, right? So as you can see, that's mandatory now. If you want to uh, delete a certain value, that's possible. If you want to maybe, maybe make it silently active, right? So that the, the AD value will not be overwritten. So it'll just, whatever values in the AD will be picked up, right? So, so again, this is completely customizable. If you want to set rules, right? Based on uh, the nature of, or whether whatever department this user is a part of, right? If you want to create a new rule, wherein if the department is just going to set uh, the department value as maybe sales, sales, right? So that's the condition that I'm setting. And I want to choose my, uh, employee description as sales employee, just an, uh, a sample text that I'm adding here. The manager can be altered. Selecting a value here. Right, so, and maybe the OU can be set to a certain value. Again, this is just, uh, this is, I'm just giving a few examples of what can be done. Now, for example, if, you, if you're doing this, right, you can, what you can do is you can have a template for each department, each designation, right? And you set your rules here, right? If the, depart, if the department is sales, then these attributes will be automatically auto-filled, right? You don't have to manually enter those details. Right. Similarly, if the department is marketing, then you know you set a corresponding set of values. You can do that one by one by adding, uh, you know, conditions in this particular section, and you can set the assigning values here. So that's how simple it is. Now, if you want to, uh, you know, create a template for each department, then you can select the department itself. So if you know that you're going to be creating users belonging to a certain department, right? If you're going to onboard 10 to 15 users or more in the automation, right? Using the automation tab that we saw, you can select the corresponding template name, right? So you select the template name, and right? if you know that these users belong to the marketing department, then you can select the template values, right? The template corresponding template name, and you can uh, configure this particular action, right? So once that's done, whatever values that you've configured in the template will get autofilled, meaning you don't have to go ahead and manually fill those values again, right? So you can similarly create for modification as well. When uh, this will come in handy when user is being modified or for, a, for example, the user is moved from one department to another, right? So from, from finance to um, operations, just giving an example here. And if that's the case, what are the changes that needs to be done without you having you know, to manually search for that user, type in those values, check those attributes are uh, fine or not, and then update that, right? So this is a few tips and tricks wherein you can just configure a template and, you know, at just once and invoke it every time you need it. So that is the uh, idea of templates. So this is the framework that I was talking about, meaning you just set it and configure everything once Right? It's a one-time activity. You can create any number of templates right? for any department, any designation that you want. And every time user has been created, users have been created, or users have been modified, you just choose a template of your choice. And those changes will be reflected automatically. Right? When the HR is changing the department value from um, marketing to sales, 
in the HR application, right? The tool and you've configured an automation to detect those changes. And when this change is detected, you want this template to be configured, right? So you can choose the template and those actions uh, based on the change, whatever attribute values have to be updated will be updated, right? So uh, we have come to the end of our session. That was a really quick introduction to the AD Manager Plus application. I didn't want to spend too much time with the tool, but what I would recommend is if you are interested to know more about the application, you are free to join um, our workshop series. So the AD Manager Plus workshop series happens quite often. Every month we schedule it for all time zones. So what I would recommend is if you're interested to know more about the application itself, right? please do sign up for the five day workshop series, which will happen over five consecutive days for an hour every day. right? So that's how this works. But again, if you have any questions and you're curious to know what AD Manager Plus is all about, what I would recommend is, uh, you know, you can get in touch with one of our technical experts and they will help you with uh, a, a free walkthrough of the solution at your convenient date and time. Mm -hmm.